Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our lesson on accounting for royalties. And we are going to take a question and solve together. So without wasting my time, let us look at how to go about this question. Gravel Extractors Limited acquired the rights to remove gravel deposits from a land owned by D. Homaji. The agreement provided for A, the payment of a royalty of 40 cents per ton of gravel removed. B, a minimum payment of $2,000 per annum. C, recoupment rights for short workings to be extinguished at the end of the third year. During the first four years of the contract, the following quantities of gravels were removed. So we have the tons, years, and then the total tons of gravels that were removed. Year one, 4,000 tons. Year two, 4,800 tons. Year three, 5,400 tons. And year four, 5,600 tons. The company's accounting year ends on 31st December and payment to D. Homaji is made on 1st February the following year. Required, prepare the appropriate accounts for each of the four years in the A, books of the company, B, books of D. Homaji. Okay, so this is the question that we are going to solve. We are going to prepare accounts in the books of the company, which is the tenant, and then we are also going to prepare in the books of D. Homaji, who is the landlord. But then, in this uh, video, we are going to focus on the first requirement. We are going to solve for the company that is extracting the gravels. So we are going to prepare in the books of the tenant where D. Homaji is the landlord. And so let us start by preparing the working schedule. I told you that before you begin any question or to begin to prepare any account on royalties, you first have to prepare a working schedule. The working schedule is going to guide you on the figures that you are going to use to prepare the accounts. And the working schedule is based on the rules and regulations of the contract. So I'm going to give you the outlay of the working schedule and then we'll come back to the question and then pick those key terms of the contract so that we'll use that to prepare the schedule. So the working schedule. So we'll start with the year output. The output is in tons. So you put that in bracket. And then we'll find our royalty payable. That will be in dollars. And then the next is the minimum payment. We must show that as well. And then we have short workings. All these in dollars. And then after the short workings, we'll have short workings recovered. Recovered or recouped. And then we have short workings written off. So this is the outlay of our working schedule. Now let us go back into the question and then look at the terms and conditions of the contract. And then we'll use that to prepare the working schedule. Now going back to the question, we are told that gravel excavators acquired the right to remove the gravel deposits. The agreement provided for A, payment of royalty of 40 cents or $0.4 per ton of gravel removed. So it means that the royalty payable will be calculated based on $0.4. That is the meaning. So whatever output that we have, we multiply by 0.4. That is the first agreement. And then the second one says that a minimum payment of $2,000 per annum. So we are going to put the $2,000 for every year, because that is the minimum payment. And that is the yardstick upon which we can 
compare, and then find any shortworkings. And then the third and very important point is that the recoupment rights for shortworkings to be extinguished at the end of the third year or year three. So it means that after year three, we don't have a chance to recover any shortworkings. So if we want to recover any shortworkings, we have a grace period of three years. The moment we exhaust three years, on the, in the fourth year, we cannot recoup or recover any short workings. So that is what we should also understand. Now, the year and the number of tones extracted each year has been given. So year one is 4,000, year two, 4,800, year three, 5,400, and then year four is 5,600. And so we show that. So year one, 4,000 will be shown. And then year two is 4,800 tons. Year three is 5,400 tons. And then finally, year four is 5,600 tons. So what the next is to complete the royalty payable. So once you have been able to do this, the next is to complete the royalty payable will be the output multiplied by the amount per ton. So 0 0.4, 40 cents times 4,000 will give us the royalty payable for the first year, which is going to be 1,600. Now for the second year, 4,800 times 0 0.4 is going to give us 1,920. And then with the third year, we multiply 5,400 by the same 0 0.4. And that is going to give us 2,160. And then in the final year, we have 5,600 multiplying 0 0.4. And that is going to give us 2,240. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the second step of the working schedule. After you have completed the year and the output, which will always be given to you in the question, the rest is to be done by yourself, which and the first part is what we just did, the royalty payable. We multiply the amount to be paid per ton by the number of output to get the royalty payable. And then the next step is to fill the column for minimum payment. The minimum payment has been given in the question as $2,000. And that runs through every year. So $2,000 for every year. So we are done with the minimum payment. So the next step is to move to the short workings. And we know that short workings is to compare the royalty payable and the minimum rent. Where there is a shortage, where the royalty payable is in short of the minimum rent, then the difference is short workings. Because you cannot pay anything below the minimum. And if you are getting $1,006, you still need to pay $2,000 to D. Homaji, who is the landlord. So in this case, the difference of $400 is a loss to the business. We call it short workings. And then in the second year, too, I think there is short workings. The difference is 80. 2,000 minus 1,920 will give you $80. In the third year, there is no short workings. But we are told that short workings can be recovered up to the, first, up to the end of the first uh, three years or up to the third year. In the fourth year, we cannot recover. So since we have an excess in the third year, we can use that excess because if you compare, there is an excess of 160, which can recover some short workings. But we have a total short workings of 480, and we have only 160. So it means that we can only, and this is the third year, the last year of the grace period to recover. So we can only recover 160, and the rest will be written off. So the total short workings is 480, and the amount we have to recover is the difference, which is the two, which is 160. So under short workings recovered in year three, we can put 160. Now take note, if we had more years to recover, we will not write off any short workings. But because this is the last year of grace period to recover the short workings, the difference between the 480 and 160 will be written off because we couldn't recover. 400 plus 80 is 480. We have recovered 160. And so the difference is 320, which will be written as short workings written off. And then in the final year, there are no short workings. And so we are done with the working schedule. So now that we are done with the working schedule, we can move on to prepare 
uh, three accounts. And I told you the accounts are three. You prepare the royalty payable account. You prepare the landlord account, which in this case would be D. Homage's account. And then finally, we prepare the short workings recoverable account. And so please take note. So I'm going to prepare the royalty payable account first. And then from there, I'll prepare the landlord account and then the short workings recoverable account. OK. Yes. And so we are going to prepare the royalties payable account. I'm going to use this space to prepare that because it doesn't entail much. So let me say royalty payable account. Now, this is an expense account. This is an expense account. So please take note that this is an expense account. So I indicate in dollars. Now, with a royalty payable account, we are going to prepare year after year. So we start with year one. And look at the simplicity of the royalty payable account. It is prepared just as the way we prepare the bad debt account in accounting for receivables. So you just indicate the expense on the debit. You write it off to the income statement. You indicate you write it off. You indicate you write it off. You indicate you write it off. And that is that. There are no balance carry downs on this account. Please take note. So in year one, and it will always be done at the last day of the year, which is 31st December, because it's an expense account. So 31st December, because we are told the accounting year ends on 31st December. So on 31st December, we will say D homage, because we are going to pay to D homage, who is the landlord. So we, we debit the royalty payable account with the royalty payable, and then we credit the landlord, which is D homage's account, because in this case, D homage is a creditor to the company. So we write 1,600. Now, please take note. We are going to prepare the royalty payable account with exactly what we have here. Short workings has nothing to do with the royalty payable account. Short workings will have something to do rather with the landlord's account. And that is why when we get there, I'm going to prepare the landlord and the short working recoverable account side by side so that you can compare. So for the royalty payable account, it is very simple. We use only these figures to prepare. So once on the 31st of December, the homage 1,600, which is the amount we had for royalty payable, we close it off to the profit or loss account. So December 31st, you can call it profit or loss account. You can call it income statement, depending on what you are doing, or even operating account. So profit or loss, 1,600. Then you close it off. We are done with the first year. That is all for the first year. Then in year two, there are no balance carried down, I told you. So the same thing, December 31st, D, homage. The amount is 1920 So you write it off again to the income statement. You write either profit or loss or the income statement, 1920 Then we are done with that. And then in year three, you do the same thing. So in year... 3, December 31st, the amount is 2,160. So D, homage. 2,160. And then December 31st, you write it off again to profit or loss or income statement, whichever you want, way you want to call it. 2,160. And then you are done with the third year. And then the final year is year four. Year 4, December 31st, D. Homaji. The amount is 2,240. So 2,240. You close it off. The same year 4, December 31st, profit or loss, 2,240. And you do your double underline. And so ladies and gentlemen, what I have done is that I have finished preparing the first requirement. Even though we're not giving the specific, we said appropriate accounts, but there are three accounts. The royalty payable account, the homages account, and then the short workings recoverable account. So we are done with the first one, which is the royalty payable account. This is the simplest of all, and I sh I'm sure that this is nothing to be confused about. 
Okay. So now I'm going to clean the board and I'm going to prepare the landlord account, which is in this case the homages account. I told you when you have the name of the person, don't just say landlord. Mention the name on the title of the account. So we are going to prepare the homages account. And that is where there will be an issue of short workings. And that is where we are going to prepare the short workings recoverable account. So please keep these figures in mind. We are going to use them to prepare the accounts. Okay. So now the next thing, we are going to prepare the landlord's account. The company name is Gravel Excavators Limited. So we prepare the landlord's account, which in this case is D. Homage's account. So we show our currency sign. D Homaji account. And then we are also going to prepare this year after year. So it will be in the same fashion. Year one, we do that. Year two, year three, in that order. Now, watch what I'm going to do very carefully. Remember that when we were preparing the royalty payable account, we debited royalty payable in the name of D Homaji. And we know that according to the double entry rule, Every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. So it means that we are going to credit the homages account with those figures in the name of royalty payable for each year. And, we, and this is where we are actually going to make payment. So please, wherever there is a shortage, we are going to top it up with the short workings. Remember that we cannot pay anything below the minimum. So when we bring the balance to the credit side and there is a shortage, we top it up with the short workings. Then we pay that on the debit side. So please take note. But we are also told, let us look at something from the question. We are told that the company's accounting year ends on 31st December and payment to the homage is made on 1st February the following year. So it means that every year's royalty payable will be paid in the following year on 1st January. So let us take note. So I'm going to begin with year one. Watch carefully. Now in year one, on December 31st, we are transferring from the royalty payable. So we call it royalty payable. And then the amount was 1,600. That is what we had from the royalty payables account. Then what you need to do now is that you need to top it up because the, you cannot pay the, any time there is, this is the liability side. You know, it's a liability account. And because it's a liability account, it has a credit balance. So when you credit the account, you, when you are making payment, you debit the account with the payment. But we, are, we cannot pay 1,600. So anytime you write and there is a shortage, we need to top it up with a difference so that it will reach the minimum, which we are going to call short workings. And remember that in the first year, we had a short working of 400. And so on the same December 31st, you call it short workings. But this time, it will be short workings recoverable because later they wish to recover the short workings. So short workings recoverable, 400. Meaning that when we are preparing the short workings recoverable amount, this also go onto the debit side because every credit entry must have a corresponding debit entry. So we write short workings recoverable and then we are done for the year. So we close the account for the year. So it means that on December 31st, there will be a balance brought forward. If you combine these two, we are going to have $2,000. So $2,000 and $2,000. So that is how to complete the account. We are not making payment this year. Remember that when I was starting, I told you that usually payments are made in the following year. And in this question, we are told that payments are made on 1st February of the following year. So in the first year, even though we are establishing the balance to be paid, sorry, it should be balance carried down. Don't worry. So balance carried down should be 2000 so even though we have established the balance to be paid, we are going to wait and pay it next year. So that is it for the first year. You credit with the royalty payable, you top it up with the short workings, and then you close the balance. And so in year two, in year two, in year two, we have to bring down the balance first. So on January 1st, there will be a balance brought forward from the previous year, 2000. And we can now make payments. So please listen. Because these entries are made at the end of the year, we, when we bring down the balance, we need to pay 
last year's balance before we come and record this year's figures. I repeat, when you bring it down, make the payments first before you start with these year's entries because payments is made in arrears. So in two, this year, 2000, the payments will be made on 1st February. So February 1, we call it bank. You can call it cash or bank. We, we, we were not told the means of payment, but usually we can write bank because normally they sign a check. So bank, meaning that if you should prepare any bank account, corresponding entry goes into the credit side of your bank account, which in this case, we are not going to prepare any bank account. So bank, we pay this 2000 because that is the minimum payment. So now that we have paid last year's royalty payable, we can make entries for this year and then wait and pay that also in the third year. A very, very simple concept. Now, in that year, December 31st, royalty payable, we are transferring this from the royalty payable account. And from the short workings, the royalty payable was 1920 and because this 1920 was not up to the minimum payment, there was a short workings. So we top it up with the short workings. And remembering from the working schedule, the short workings for, was 80. So on the same December 31st, we call it short workings. But we just want to add the recoverable. So short workings, recoverable, 80. Meaning that when we are preparing accounts for short working recoverable, these ones will be transferred to the account as corresponding entries. So we are done with that as well. So we close it off and wait to pay next year. A very simple concept. So December 31st, there will be another balance carried down, also of 2,000. That is for this year. So we are going to have total of 4,000 each. And then we move to year three. So in year three, we need to first bring down this balance. So we bring down the balance. Balance, the date will be January 1st. Balance brought forward, $2,000. And just like I, I told you, we need to make the payment first before we think about the entries for the year. And so we are going to make payment on February 1st. So on February 1st, we make payment into bank, which is 2000 to D homage. Then we can go and look for these year's entries and then we make it. All right. Now, <clears throat> in the third year, the royalties payable was 2160 And so December 31st, royalty payable, 2160 It means that this is how much, it, but remember that there was a short workings recovered in that year. The extra 160 was a recovery of a previous short workings. So we are still to show the short workings recovered. But because it is a recovery, we are not topping it up. We are rather subtracting because we, we, we should have paid next year, we should have paid this 2,160. But because the extra 160 is being allowed by the landlord for a recovery, we will still pay the minimum of 2000 and use this 160 to offset. And therefore, in accounting, when we are subtracting, we record at the opposite side. So we are going to record the 160 on the debit side so that the balance carried down, which we are going to pay, will reduce to 160, eh, to 2000, sorry. And so on the December 31st, now instead of the short working recoverable, which we have been seeing on the credit. You see, if it was a shortage, we add it up here. But because now it's an excess and it's a recovery, it will come to the debit side to reduce the balance. So take the note of this, that short workings will always be, short workings itself is on the credit side of the account. But when it is being recovered, record on the debit side. So we say short workings recoverable. The same thing, because that's the name of the account. 160. So now, when we open the short workings recoverable account, this amount will be transferred to the credit side as a recovery. And therefore, we are done with year three. So we close it off. December 31st, there will be a balance carried down of 2000 if you compare. So that is going to give us a total of 4160 on the account. 
And then we move on to year four, which is the final year. Now, in year four, January 1st, there will be a balance brought forward, which we are going to pay now, which is the $2,000. And so we are going to pay February 1st, bank, $2,000. Now, let us make entries for the last year. And we know that we are also going to pay this in the fifth year, remember. And so, in the fifth year, the royalty payable, December 31st, royalty payable was 2240 This time, the right to recover had expired, so the extra 240 will not be treated as a recovery. We are going to pay all of that to the landlord. And so that is it. We are done with that. So there is no short workings and there is no short working recovery in year four. So we just close it off as a balance carry down. So December 31st, there will be a balance carry down of 2,240. So we close it off, 4,240, sorry. And then in the year five, which we are not required to do, I'm just showing the closing balance. January 1st will be a balance brought forward of 2,240. The question says we should prepare up to the end of the fourth year. And so I'm not going to show any payment. I am done with this. So this is how to prepare accounts for the landlord in the books of the company. So that is it for that. I'm sure this is very understandable. So next, we are going to prepare the short workings recoverable account. And then all that we need to do there is just to transfer these figures into that account. And then I'll show you how to complete and balance that as well. Okay. Also, we are on the final stage where we are going to prepare the short workings recoverable account. So look at how it's also going to be like. So short workings recoverable account. Show my currency sign in dollars. And then we are going to do that year after year. So year one. Now, it is the easiest, as I told you. Okay, let me say, the right to payable may be the easiest. But the reason why this is also not difficult is that you are just going to transfer the balances from the landlord or dehomagist account. And so in the first year, there is 400 on the credit side on 31st December. So every credit entry must have a corresponding debit entry. So when we come to the debit side here, we we'll indicate December... 31st, which is the same date. And then we'll say D homage. That is the name of the account. D homage 400. So all that I have done is that I'm transferring from the landlord's account into the short workings recoverable. And that is all for the first year because there is nothing more. So in this account, we are only transferring what we have from the landlord's account. And so at the end of the year, December 31st, there will be a balance carried down. Now, the reason why there is a balance carried down is because we are carrying the short workings forward in hope that in future we will recover it. If we get to the year where the right to recoup or to recover the short working has expired, then we write it off as a loss to the profit or loss account. So that's what we are going to do. So as long as we still have hope to recover in the subsequent years, we cannot write it off to profit or loss, so we create a closing balance for that. And then we move to year two. Now, in year two, the balance carried down will now be a brought down or a brought forward. That is 400 from the previous year. And then we go back to the landlord's account, and we see that there is still short workings on the credit side. Even if, without referring to the landlord's account, you can use the working schedule that we prepared to still prepare this account. We know that the first year was 80, just that it should be in the name of the landlord. So in the second year, we debit. This is an asset account. Please take note. The landlord's account is a liability account because of it's a creditor's account. But a short working recoverable account is an asset account. So please take note. That is why it has a debit balance. So December 
31st, we are transferring this amount. So it will be in the name of D Homaji 80. And that is all. But there is nothing on the credit side for that. So we close it again for the second year. So on December 31st, because there was no recovery. So another balance carried down because we still have another one year where we can do recovery. If the, the right to recover expired in the second year, then we would have closed all to the profit or loss account as an expense. So we have 480 as a closing balance. So in the year three, we bring the balance down. Remember to always bring the balance down first before you go and look for a possible recovery or whatever it is. So 480. Now, in the year three, there was no short working on the credit side, but there was short working recoverable on the debit, meaning there was a recovery. And every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. So this time, because it was debited, it will be brought to the credit side. So December 31st, in the name of D. Homaji, we put 160 here. So what we have done is that we have credited the short workings recovery account because it's a recovery. Now, this is the last year we have a right to recover or recoup any short workings. In the fourth year, we have nothing like short workings. So we are expiring the right here to, to recover. So we need to close it off. So at the end of the year, the total is 480. We should have called it a balance carry down. But when you call it a balance carry down, it means that you have hope to recover in the subsequent year. Meanwhile, according to the terms and conditions of the contract, the third year is the last year to recover. So if you are not able to recover at the end of the third year, any short workings becomes an expense to you. So you close it off to your profit or loss account. And then you, that, the difference is 320. Then ladies and gentlemen, you are done with the short workings recoverable account. So this is how to go by this. All right, okay. So now we are done with the question. These are the three accounts that are important. So the next thing to do is to do that for the books of the landlord. But that is going to be done in our next video, okay? In our next video, which is the part three, we are going to solve this same question. But we are going to use the same figures to prepare in the books of the landlord. And you see that over there, it's going to be opposite because while the company sees the landlord as a creditor, in the books of the landlord, they will see the company as a debtor. And so in this company's book, we prepare the royalty payable account. In the books of the landlord, he will prepare royalties receivable account. So that will be an income account. Here it was an expense. Then we prepare the homage account. So in the books of the landlord, he is going to prepare gravel, gravel excavators account as a debtor. And every, every entry we have made will be there, but it's just that it's going to be an opposite thing. So all that is on the credit here will be on the debit for them, and then the, the debit will be on the credit. So the same entries, but it's just going to turn around. So you can try your hands on that, but I'm going to solve that in the part three of this video. And then also with a short workings recoverable account in the books of the landlord, or in the books of D. Homaji, he's going to prepare short workings allowable account. So while this looks like an asset account, that is a liability account to him. So he's going to prepare short workings allowable, but we prepare short workings recoverable. So I don't want you to confuse your mind. It's just one step at a time. Just focus on what I've done for now. Master, because the most important is to be able to prepare in the books of the company. But the landlord may not necessarily be a, a, a corporate entity that wants to prepare accounts, okay? All they may be interested in is their money paid to them. However, if the landlord is another company and has an accountant, then the accountant must also prepare some books. And that is where we are going to learn how to prepare in the books of Gravel, A, eh, in the books of D. Homaji, sorry. So, so we are f ending this video here. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Leave a comment and let us know how you've been helped. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. Until we meet again for the part three, it is bye for now.